Good evening. Welcome to Truth Seekers. My name is Mike Fishkin. Seated on the other end of the table is Jay Saylor, as usual. And we've got a special guest with us tonight, a neat brother named Dave Patella, who sees things just like we do. And uh, that makes it copacetic. And he's got a lot of experience with uh, intelligent design, creation, evolution. And um, we'll try and direct questions his way on that subject today. Um, we got an email this week, before we get into the film, from a fellow named William, who, uh, who must have been Catholic. I mean, he didn't say, but he was upset that we were talking about the fact that the Catholic Church preaches a different gospel and says that Mary is involved with salvation uh, and that salvation comes through her. And he said, Catholic literature doesn't say anything like that. So I, I brought along my slightly used uh, Vatican Council II. Uh, Two-thirds of it is, I left it home, it broke in half. I've had it for 30 years. But on, uh, on the section on the church, in the section called, they call it the Cult of Mary, um, they say, I'll just read right from the Vatican II documents, it's right in their literature, taken up to heaven, she did not lay aside this saving office, but by her, manifold intercession continues to bring us the gifts of eternal salvation. Now, Mary doesn't bring us the gifts, of, doesn't bring us salvation in any way, shape, or form. It only comes through Jesus, through faith alone, by grace alone. And uh, so that's a different gospel. And so if William, you're watching, that's for you. Um, this week, I don't know if any of you uh, saw the science section in the Oregonian. I'm sure some of you did. Um, on the, the back part of the page, uh, they had some colorful pictures of these two monarchs and they said they've discovered these genes that regulate the way they fly and help them to um, gauge how, where to go and, and, and how to fly. And let me just read a couple of things here relating to that. Um, they say here that there's two genes, CRY1 and CRY2, that hold the codes for making protein molecules they act as the gears of the clock, as they call it, in the monarch's mind. The proteins are created and destroyed on a regular basis, they say. This tells the organism how much time has passed, so they can tell time, just like you and I. They don't have to buy a watch or anything. Um, and, and they can tell time since the last time the clock was reset. And every 24 hours, the sun strikes some light-sensitive cells with the right intensity, and the clock is reset to zero. Um, and <laughs> they, they go on here, and uh, they talk about how not, they can gauge also if they're blown off course by hundreds of miles, they can figure out where to go, because they're always flying back to the same area where their grandparents came from. They've never seen this area in Hawaii, but they're flying all the way back there, Somehow, because we know how, God's programmed them to be able to do that. What if the sun doesn't come out, Mike? That's, that's a good question. They don't, they don't talk about that here, but that's a great question. Um, they say here that um, this guy thinks this will lead to more sweeping insights into the evolution <coughs> of complex behavior. And they think somehow that this is helping them understand evolution more. Of course, they don't understand, they don't explain why or how. Um, and it, it's just like hopeful theorizing, as usual. Uh, they probably don't need direct sunlight. Assuming that part may be true, they, they may not need direct sunlight. You know, you know cloud cover would, wouldn't block those rays, presumably. Um, you know, it's like with so many uh, things that we hear, um, where they tack on an evolutionary interpretation or a message, uh, there's some good science, some valid scientific observations, and then they say, by the way, and they tack on an evolutionary, uh, uh, you know, um, twist to it. So, you know, it's like with everything, we all need to be discerning. <coughs> you know, <clears throat> one thing we can talk about, the monarch butterfly, and it's interesting you bring that up, Mike, because when they go from the, the caterpillar to the, the morphing into the, the butterfly, that cocoon stage, they turn to liquid and the only thing that remains is the heart. Mm -hmm. So it goes from solid to liquid to solid. Now, explain that 
as it, through an evol <laughs> evolutionary process. That's an incredible piece of evidence for design and creation. Yeah, uh, what's the need for that? Evolution, you, you're supposed to go from the simplest to the more complex. So why would you turn into a piece of jelly um, without any discerning features to turn into something completely different? It's just God just showing how incredibly brilliant <laughs> and how um, creative he is. In, Butterflies are among the most beautiful creatures on the planet and, and fragile and delicate and yet able to go right back to where their grandparents came from even they, though they've never been there and they think this is going to help them. You know, evolutionary theory falls apart every which way. I think we're getting a phone call here. If we don't, we're going to go into a section of film that is about seven and a half minutes long and yeah, we've got Jan on the line. Hi, Jan. Hello? Can hear. Hi there. Hi, Hi. Jan. How are you guys doing? Good. 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 I've talked before, and I just have a little factoid because this is very interesting that you're talking about the DNA strands and all that they think they know. Um, according to their studies, the human body is missing 70 genes in order for us to work the way we do. So they really don't know how much they don't know. That's, you know, <laughs> science, okay? But what I really wanted to let you guys know is what I have just recently learned, and I, I had a stroke, so I'm bad with names, and if I don't write them down, I forget them, but Darwin, I do remember that name, um, Darwin's first cousin is the father of eugenics. Um, and if you want to research that on the internet, eugenics will take you down a rabbit hole of, I believe, Satan, okay? You can call me crazy if you want, but what's at work here is very dark, and it's been going on for a long time. And when I heard that Darwin's first cousin was the father of this eugenic project that oh, you know, I think they know about that in Germany because it has to do with creating a perfect race. So, you know, this is, this is good and evil, dark and white and mm -hmm. all that. So it just goes beyond just seeking the truth. This is, like, bizarre. <laughs> well, well, Jan, thank you. And first of all, I don't think you're crazy at all because Jesus said, he who is, is not with me is against me. So if it's not of the Lord, then who is it of? Absolutely. absolutely. So you're, you're right on there, Jan. Yeah, and I'm not affiliated with any religious sect, and I have no great love of the Catholics, but I do have to say to Mike that the last time we spoke, and I brought up the Native American issue, and what came out of what you responded was, that was the Catholics. It may have originated with the Catholics, but by the time the settlers made it here, they were not just Catholics <laughs> that overtook the Native peoples. So I just wanted to clear that up because I don't want to carry any kind of resentment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I was referring to the fact that the Catholic Church, just like Islam, has used the sword often to spread religion in the past. Yes. Whereas that's totally contrary to doing unto others as you'd have them do to you. And, and the reformers, the Protestant reformers, understood that very clearly. Right, and, and some of them still hold to that to some degree, and I appreciate that. But in these times, I am fearful of what I am seeing in many of these um, zealous, organized, religious sects, as I see them. It's almost like we're experiencing uh, a Christian cult movement, and it's terrifying. Mm. And I would hope that, I know that you've done a lot of good work at showing um, the past and Aleister Crowley and influence on, you know, that whole, the, the foundation. But I, I hope that we can keep moving forward and expose what is happening today, um, right now, before our eyes. And... That's just my personal preference. And well, thanks for calling, Jan. You have a blessed evening. Thank you, Jan. Bye. Bye-bye.